welcome to another episode of Spotlight on Health. I'm your host, Dr. Stephen Eschenauer, the health officer at the Canal Charleston Health Department. And today we have two special guests, we have Mr. Jeremy Smith and Mr. Adam Short with First Choice Services. And we're going to talk about the spectrum of services that First Choice offers. So, Jeremy, Adam, welcome to our show. Thank you for having us. Thank you. So, Jeremy, First Choice it doesn't necessarily say exactly what it is. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about what is First Choice Services. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, First Choice Services is a uh, statewide nonprofit organization based here in Charleston. And we specialize in helping with social service and behavioral health helplines. So a lot of the 800 numbers that you might see when you're driving around the state, if you see those billboards, uh, chances are that comes into us. We've got uh, about 175 employees that offer just a range of different helplines at this point. So uh, I've been with the program now for a little over eight years, and mm -hmm. I've got to see us grow from, you know, when I started about 30-some employees to over the 175 now, and we've been able to add a lot of really great programs that help West Virginians. So. Uh, uh, it's you know it, it's great to have so many people at the organization that just want to help and dedicate uh, their lives to making West Virginians healthier. So uh, it's a really great place, and you know it, it really is helpful to a lot of folks in in the state that uh, need to find assistance for various different problems. Okay, excellent. excellent. And Adam, uh, tell us what you do with uh, First Choice. I am the outreach coordinator for First Choice, which means that I help set up a lot of the outreach that happens for all the different programs, uh, specifically with our navigator programs, but also work with all the different programs as well. So. Yeah, good, good, good. Mm -hmm. So within the, the spectrum of First Choice, you have a number of different areas. Mm -hmm. So let's talk first about maybe some of the, the health-related uh, services that your firm offers. Yeah. So, uh, just lead us off with one of them that uh, is maybe the one of the oldest programs that, that you've had. Sure. So, really, our oldest three at this point is the 1-800-GAMBLER program that helps folks dealing with the gambling addiction. We've got Help for WV, which is the state's uh, mental health and addiction helpline. And then, of course, uh, we've got West Virginia Navigator that is a free grant-funded service to the state just to help people find and sign up for health insurance. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that people that have health coverage are happier and healthier. It allows them to get to doctors and hospitals and uh, check on little problems before they maybe become too large of problems like cancer or heart attacks. So uh, the program, it, it's really good. It helps people uh, sign up for the West Virginia Medicaid program, mm -hmm. uh, the CHIP program for kids, and then the plans on what's called the health insurance marketplace through healthcare.gov. And so this time of year is open enrollment for the marketplace as well. So it's really our busy season for Navigator just to help people figure out what insurance they may qualify for, go over the deductibles and co-pays with them and make sure their doctors are in network and then make sure that they can get the financial assistance that the federal government offers that helps them pay for the plan they've picked out. So this time of year, we're just kind of all over the state trying to let people know if you can't get insurance through your job or Medicare or Medicaid mm -hmm. or through the VA, there is this health insurance marketplace and about nine in 10 people that get a marketplace plan get that monthly subsidy from the federal government that can wow. help you pay for it. Nine out of 10 in West Virginia get a subsidy. Yep, yep. and a lot, of, a lot of things have changed with the program the last couple years. What we've seen is the price really come down and the plans in most cases are more affordable than we've ever seen. So <laughs> about four in five West Virginians can get a plan for starting at under $10 a month. Wow. And that's after the government subsidy kicks in and helps you pay for it. So uh, it's a really great option for folks, even if they've looked into it in the past and maybe wasn't sold on it or they didn't think they could afford it. We're really trying to get people to come back and look at the marketplace again uh, because with these changes, it's a really good option for folks. So, you know, we're just trying to get the word out that if you need insurance, this is the time of year that you need to pay attention to it and, and get signed up. Yeah, it is essential because when you're uninsured, then you feel like, well, I can't go to the doctor. I don't have mm -hmm. a doctor. I can't afford to go to the doctor, so you don't. And then you miss out on important screening, immunizations, for instance. Um, 
whether it's a mammogram or a pap smear or colonoscopy, what, whatever it is that you might need as just a screening tool. But when you have insurance, it puts all those into that world of reality that, hey, I can go and get those and not have to worry about a, a big bill from it. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's an essential service because healthcare is so confusing for many people. Medicaid and CHIP, as well as the uh, health insurance marketplace. Tell us a little bit about uh, CHIP, for instance. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's many West Virginians, I bet, don't even know what the acronym stands for. Sure, it's uh, the Children's Health Insurance Plan. And it's just a phenomenal program. I mean, it, it has just touched the lives of so many families and their kids. Uh, it, essentially what it means is if uh, your family uh, earns under a certain amount of money, if you're under 300% of the federal poverty level, you can potentially qualify for this children's health insurance plan. Mm -hmm. And for some families, it may be free. Other families may have to pay a, a little bit for it and then have some co-pays and deductibles, but it's very low and the coverage is really great. I've never seen a family um, be dissatisfied with it after they've got their kids on the chip uh, insurance. So that's one of the just many options that we have in West Virginia. And the majority of families based on their income can end up qualifying for it. You can make quite a bit and be able to get chip for your kids. So uh, it's just a really good option. and. We never want to see kids go without insurance. And with this program, the majority of families can kind of fall into that program. So if you haven't looked into it, it's a really good option. And then, you know, of course, at Navigator, we can kind of talk to you about that and help you actually even get signed up. So, Adam, when you were talking about doing outreach work, how do you reach those who really need to hear your message about the programs that you offer? Yeah, so I think our biggest thing is just trying to get out into our different markets to be able to talk to individuals one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I think a lot of times people are kind of leery about just calling a number and maybe disclosing their information, but when we get out there, people will get a face with uh, what we're trying to do so people are able to kind of connect with us. We're able to sit down with them one-on-one, -on -one, um, kind of describe the whole process to them. And, I think it opens up a lot of opportunities for us to be able to not only work with the individuals in those communities, but also a lot of our stakeholders too, to get get some buy-in from them so that they understand what we're doing. And you know, we're all trying to work together to make West Virginia a better place to live um, and a healthier place to live. So. Mm -hmm. So in the health department, for instance, we have had one of your representatives <clears throat> working in there to mm -hmm. Uh, see a, a number of the patients that we have and clients that come in and offer the services and educate them about what you do. Where else do you put uh, outreach uh, personnel within the state? Where all have you, you placed indiv individuals? So we've, we, we had set up in some hospitals um, and done some like live locations like that. Um, we've been doing a lot of open enrollment events currently. Um, mm -hmm. We've done them in Beckley, we've done them in Huntington, Parkersburg, um, and uh, you know we're just continuing to try to expand that as well. So as we look at different locations to try to uh, work with individuals, um, and I'm sure Jeremy will probably talk about a big push that we'll do later, but, um, but you know we're just trying to get into all of our different counties to be able to reach individuals because you know people think they have to come to a certain place, but you know we want to go to them. We want them to be able to see it's accessible for everyone. So. Absolutely. So tell us about another program, Jeremy, that uh, you offer through First Choice. Yeah, so probably the one that gets the most attention, especially just because West Virginia really suffers from, from problems with addiction, it is 1844 oh, yes. Help for WV. And so this kind of came about several years ago. At the time, uh, then Governor Tomlin was going around the state and holding these listening sessions and these town hall meetings. And it kept coming up over and over again that people didn't exactly know how to even access treatment. They didn't know what options was available in the state. They didn't know the process or what paperwork was needed. They might do a Google search and only find two or three facilities in their community. And if they were full, they just didn't know what to do next. So what we were able to do is uh, at that point, uh, Governor Tomlin uh, created 844 Help for WV. And with the help of the DHHR here in West Virginia, 
uh, we was able to get this program off the ground and First Choice has been answering this helpline ever since. And we was able to compile a list of every treatment facility in the state at that point. Over a thousand different providers that, that offer help with long-term treatment, short-term, MAT, mm -hmm. faith-based, outpatient, really any kind of treatment you can think of. And we was able to compile this list and then create this 24-hour helpline so that anytime somebody is ready to get into treatment uh, for substance use disorder or if they need a provider for mental health treatment, all they need to do is call 844-HELP-FOR-WV. And then we can talk to them about uh, what area they're looking for treatment in, what kind of facility they might be looking for. And then at this point, we're on the phone with these facilities so often, we can often help, help them find an opening and find a bed really quickly. And then we help them kind of remove barriers. We help arrange mm -hmm. transportation. We can help do a Medicaid application if they need health care. Um, we can help them figure out what paperwork might be needed and help the facility get that paperwork. So really it's just a way to remove barriers and help people find a facility that they might be looking for quickly and then help them get into that facility quickly. So it's been a great work, program. Do you also work with providers that say they have a, a, a patient comes into an ER or a clinic and said, hey, I'm ready to get some help. Do you work with them directly or do you need to many times work with the actual patient. Yeah, so um, we need the patient as part of the process for sure, uh, but oftentimes a patient may come in and want somebody at a facility or a provider or you know some kind of professional there with them assisting, and that's okay. Um, but then oftentimes we'll just hear from you know nurses, social workers, peer recovery coaches, all kinds of different professionals that need resources as well. And they, they, have, they know they have a patient that's looking and they'll call us and we can help them. So it, it's been a really good service. I mean, we get a, over 25,000 calls a year on wow. that helpline and uh, we're able to help the vast majority of people, you know, find treatment and get in quickly. So that helpline, is it open 24 hours a day, seven days a week? Yep, it is. Yep, we're, we're open every single day, 24 hours a day. And um, like I said, it's, it's for the, the person needing treatment, but also professionals and even loved ones as well. A lot of times we'll have a parent or a grandparent or a brother or sister call us and want to do some leg work for their loved one and have know what options is available. So, you know, it, it's just been a really cool service and um, it's, it, we, we think it's been a help to the community as well. Yeah, as an ER provider, I get a lot of questions when people come through the door, you know, where can I go, what options are available, and, and we don't know them all in the ER, and I'm, I'm glad that there's mm -hmm. a central repository, so we, we usually get a coordinator, one of the social workers, that they come and help a patient make a decision on, are you really ready to go into treatment, and here are a lot of the options. So yeah. it, it's a crucial service, especially given the degree of substance abuse that we have here in, in West Virginia. It, it's really tragic for many communities, many families, and many individuals. So, yeah. uh, so Adam, how do you market that service? Or are you part of that outreach as well? <laughs> yeah, um, absolutely. So, I mean, it, a lot of the providers that we work with, you know, they're actually contacting us and letting us know what beds are available. So, you know, we have such a good relationship with our providers that they're really reaching out to us at this point. Um, and you know we're able to get people into treatment within 24 hours, which is remarkable considering where we were just even a couple of years ago, uh, even before COVID. I mean the the treatment beds were kind of few and far between, but we're really seeing an increase in that. And you know, and more and more people are starting to hear about us, um, about our programs, and we're able to reach more people. Um, you know, through our events uh, that we do in the public, that we're able to kind of pass out literature to people to make mm. them understand exactly what we do instead of it just um, being you know just a piece of paper to hand out to them you know we explain to them how it could be a lifeline to some, for them and not just for them but maybe for someone that they love you know people that uh, they care about as Jeremy mentioned you know it's it's not just for uh, people needing help with addiction but it also could be for their loved ones as well and so it's just a great resource and we have a lot of great people that that work on those lines and you know where we're a second chance employer a lot of these people have lived experience and and so they're able to help provide some guidance as far as that goes so 
when individuals are calling in to get the help that they need, you know, you never know who you're going to be talking to on the other end. It might be someone with that experience to help them get into the treatment or, or find the treatment yeah. option that's right for them. So, I, and I've noticed even your billboards mm -hmm. through, throughout the state, and uh, I think it's it's not just a great message, but it's a great service that really, really does help West Virginia. And I appreciate the efforts of First Choice because, uh, wow, we. It, it, the impact in America is, is, is very significant, but West Virginia seems like we've, we've borne a, a heavy burden of it, of substance abuse. So um, let's move on to another service that First Choice offers. Since you offer so many, I'd like to at least hit on, on a number of other items. So sure. what do you want to talk about next? Sure. So uh, our, our oldest program and um, one that I think a lot of people forget about is the 1-800-GAMBLER program. We, we've been operating the Problem Gamblers Help Network of West Virginia uh, for about 21 years now. Oh, wow. and, and so this, this kind of came about uh, when West Virginia was first looking at kind of expanding legalized gambling. Mm -hmm. And so at the time, the legislature, they, they looked at everything and uh, they looked at the studies and you can pretty much guarantee that any time you have legalized gambling in an area, that at least about one in 50 people is going to develop a gambling problem. One in 50. And in a lot of cases, it's even more than that. So oh, wow. Um, we was able to uh, get funding and start this program at that point to uh, do a number of things. We, we operate the helpline for somebody that's dealing with a gambling addiction and they can call and uh, we can kind of talk to them about some different options. And uh, then what we've done is we've went around the state and we've worked and we've trained counselors on how to treat gambling addiction. So we have a network of counselors all across the state that we can get the caller in with so that they can, you know, work on some, some coping mechanisms and some things they can do uh, to treat the problem. And so we know that uh, actually gambling addiction has a very high rate of success for people that either try, want to try to stop mm -hmm. or significantly reduce the behavior. Uh, so we talk to them about you know, what options they have and then we'll even pay for their counseling if they don't have insurance or let's say there's situations to where they may have high deductibles and they can't afford the treatment. Um, we can even do up to 20 sessions per year paid, and we can even do up to 10 sessions a year for the family member if they want to go talk to a counselor as well. Because, you know, the gambling addictions, uh, it's very hard because a lot of people are, if we're the loved one, we may not even see it coming. Uh, it's something that maybe you can hide, whereas, you know, drug and alcohol problems, you can maybe see the behavior, smell mm -hmm. it, see it. Um, but with gambling addiction, a lot of times you may not even know until you're completely bankrupt or you've lost your yeah. employer or, you know, uh, you've just kind of went down this road that you can't get back, get back from. So uh, it, it's, it's really rough on a lot of the folks that's dealing with it. And unfortunately, when we're out doing outreach, um, this is one where often people come by and kind of crack jokes. Uh, you know, they, they look at us and they go, ha ha, Uncle Bob, maybe mm -hmm. we should give this to him and he should cut back on his gambling. But it's kind of a cry for help. A lot of us have family members that may be going through this and everybody just kind of brushes it under the rug because it's maybe not looked at the same as alcohol and drug addiction. But um, for the folks that's dealing with it, it's super high rates of suicide, high rates of divorce, high rates of bankruptcy. I mean, it really just completely derails people's mm -hmm. lives, but this is the one that often people will kind of crack jokes about and maybe don't really even think that it's a real addiction or a real thing. So that's part of what we do. We're always trying to get out and give presentations and educate the public that, you know, this does affect at least one in 50 people and not only adults, but we're actually seeing uh, research that kids are affected as well. Uh, in what so, way are the kids affected? So a lot of times the modern video games, they have elements of gambling in it. Uh, and yep. then kids like to play games of chance with each other as well all the time. Um, so even if they're not maybe you know playing cards or something like that, even making bets among friends, um, that kind of stuff. So we're, we're trying to mm -hmm. get in front of kids and do some prevention work 
around this as well so that kids know uh, that this is something they may want to try to avoid. Yeah. Uh, it seems like those that I've known that have had gambling addiction issues, it, may, it goes on for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. It's not just, oh, well, I was addicted for a while and then they're off. It seems like they, they carry an issue, a problem with it. It's like, the, the adage, you know, an alcoholic who's just not drinking, that you know, once an alcoholic, you're always yeah. an alcoholic. You yeah. may not be drinking, and it's the same with a gambler, that once, once a gambler, you're always a gambler. You, you may not just be gambling at the moment, and how financially it can just drain individuals and families yeah. again and again, and it's very easy to fall right back into that trap. And yeah. For those that aren't gamblers or don't understand it, I could see where they would, oh, it's not that big of an issue, or blow it off, or, or crack jokes at it. But for others, it, it's, it's a real deal. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it's, uh, it's really rough on a lot of folks. Um, and unfortunately, uh, we, we see if somebody, if somebody has like big wins early in their life, Mm -hmm. That rush of dopamine they get those first that first big win it kind of follows them the rest of their life they're always trying to chase that behavior the rest of their life so you know there's certain uh, things that can happen especially youth if they start young it can continue to build so you know there's definitely things that can happen to folks that may make them more prone to it family history of course too oh, yeah. um, so you know that's just part of our program not only are we trying to help people. Uh, that may be dealing with the problem already, but we're always trying to educate folks that, you know, this can be a major issue. You know, with Christmas just coming up too, another big one is uh, some families want to give their, their kids and their loved ones lottery tickets or scratch-off tickets. So we're always trying to talk about maybe that may not be the best idea as well. So Yeah, uh, actually it was kind of comical. One of my friends was surprised when their uh, in-laws gave them, he, he got a present and it was, a bunch of uh, lottery tickets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, that's like, okay, well, Merry Christmas. Uh, <laughs> here's some scratch off tickets. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, because uh, in our family, we had not been gamblers, so my son was a little surprised at that. that, that uh, was, <laughs> yep. He just never really thought in that way that that would be a present or a gift. But right. for somebody else, oh, oh, I love that. You know, I get those scratch offs and, oh, did I win? Did I win? Yep. Did, what'd you win? And it seemed like the individual that gave him the tickets, that's oh, he wanted to scratch them all off right then and there to see how much he won. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it definitely runs in some families and just kind of normal behavior. But where we see that it, it if a kid starts down a, that path early, it can really kind of you know mess them up in adulthood. So. Mm -hmm. We're always trying to get the word out about that. We even do some uh, mini grants to organizations around the state that uh, work with kids already. Mm -hmm. So we'll give them some funding to, you know, do what, some prevention work around the issue too. Uh, what what kind of organizations in particular that, that you give a grant to? Yeah, so uh, a lot of family resource networks around okay. the state. Um, Adam, do you remember any of the others that we've kind of been looking at lately? Uh, I mean, just a lot of them that work in, within the school system that already mm -hmm. have had those relationships established. I see. Yep. Mm -hmm. Do you see, or <clears throat> when you talk with people that have a gambling issue, that many times this started in early childhood? It, it's kind of a combination between um, starting in childhood, uh, family history can be a factor, and then the other one, like I said, is that big win. Um, I, I, for example, you know, I went on a, uh, a trip one time with somebody when we was about 21 years old and he hit about a thousand dollars on the slot machine. And to this day, I'm still kind of bored by gambling, but he loves it. Anytime we, he goes, we go out, he's like, Hey, let's, let's go to the casino. So, you know, <laughs> 20 years later, he's still kind of chasing that, that, so a big win can definitely be a big factor for, uh, people that develop a problem. And then, you know, if you're a loved one, uh, there's actually a pretty quick screening tool that you can ask somebody. It's just two questions. It was, it's, uh, have you ever lied about your gambling behavior? And then the other is, have you ever bet more than you intended? And if you answer yes to either one of those two questions, it's kind of an indicator that you may have a problem. So mm -hmm. just two questions, real easy. You can ask yourself or you can ask a loved one. And if the answer is yes to either of those, it may be something you want to think about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I could see that where either of those, it's kind of like the cage questionnaire for alcoholics. Mm -hmm. you know, about 
getting angry if they cut back and needing an eye opener, those types of things. Yep. Well, it's, uh, the, it, it is an issue definitely in, across the country, gambling as well. So what other, in our last few minutes, what other items does First Choice offer that you might want to let our, our viewers know about? Yeah, I think a couple of the other ones that we really want to bring to everybody's attention is, you know, we operate the, the West Virginia Tobacco Quit Line. And, you know, that's, that's obviously a big deal here in West Virginia because we have one of the highest rates of tobacco use in the whole country. And then we also know that if you are tobacco free, uh, you know, your likelihood for, you know, better health is much higher um, and, you know, medical costs, uh, insurance costs, there's a lot of benefits from not using tobacco products. So um, we want to let people know that this tobacco quit line, you know, it is here to help. Um, so if your current insurance plan doesn't offer its own tobacco cessation program within your own insurance, mm -hmm. um, then the tobacco quit line is going to be a good resource for you to reach out and um, we can get you enrolled in the program. It comes with tobacco cessation uh, medications or therapies and then of course it comes with tobacco coaching calls where we can talk to you about coping mechanisms to try to keep you on the right path. So. Um, New Year's coming up, that's always a big time for people to try to, you know, pledge some uh, lifestyle changes. Uh, this might be a really good one for folks. Oh, absolutely. Do you tend to see more calls on that line after New Year's or right before New Year's? Is that a busy time for you? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, with, uh, you know, everybody getting together around Christmas and family members encouraging it, and then also with New Year's resolutions, I, th I think it always gives people a good opportunity to, you know, think that January could be a new start. Mm -hmm. You also help uh, connect people with getting, say, nicotine patches and or uh, nicotine or substitute medications? Yeah. yeah. Yep. That's definitely part of it, for sure. That's all part of that same program? Yep. I got you. Yep. Yeah, it's, um, it, it's a huge issue here in West Virginia. Mm -hmm. It is surprising that we have one of the highest smoking rates in the country, but indeed we do. And with that comes yep. all of the COPD, that is emphysema, that can come with that and higher lung cancer rates as well. So yeah, the old ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. Um, and then, you know, lastly, the last one I do want to mention, it's a big part of what we do, is the state's uh, 988 program, the Suicide Prevention Lifeline. So this, it's now a three-digit code. It used to be 1-800, uh, a 1-800 number. Mm -hmm. And now, just like 911 for emergencies, now you can call 988 for 988. mental health or suicide emergencies. And you don't have to actively be suicidal. If you just want to talk to somebody, just call it. It's open 24 seven. All right. Well, Jeremy, Adam, I want to thank both of you for coming on the show and for sharing your services. And I want to thank our viewers. So we look forward to having you back for another episode of Spotlight on Health, and we want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.